Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 3rd, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. There's our low pressure center that's been with us for a few days. It's continuing to pull off to the west, allowing for this monsoon moisture to stay in place across some of the western USA. We got fires on going out there. We got thunderstorm potential coming over the next few days. So let's dive into that here as we go through the video today. Here we go. So this is uh, the mid-level water vapor loop and you can see the lightning across some of california today and you see that monsoon moisture in place across oregon creeping up in towards portions of washington there as well and there's our low pressure center kind of backing off to the west now if we take a look at what happened yesterday so we're going to go all the way back towards yesterday morning look at that marine there socked in across western washington some of the i-5 corridor all the way up into southwest bc olympic mountains you were above it same thing with the cascades and a lot of oregon was just plain clear yesterday including the oregon coast at least in the morning hours and then we scroll through the day yesterday yesterday and look at some of these fires flare up sugarloaf fire rattlesnake bear gulch wildcat fire look at the hot spot on that thing there and we just got an update so let's back up again and you can see that smoke kind of flying across the region there i was out there right about or just before sunset on i-90 cle Elm and got some interesting pictures of that but yeah these fires are really flaring up out there and we've got more than just those fires you can see that one across northeast washington there's one across british columbia as well and look at the sugarloaf fire all night that hot spot was just burning so some probably rapid spread from that and i know there's a lot of cabins near some of these fires out there. So a lot of people have a lot to be concerned about with some of this fire activity here over the next few days before some potential relief starts to arrive as we go through next week. More on that here in a moment. This was my view there near I-90 uh, near Cleelum, and, and you can see some just interesting uh, cloudscapes there or smokescapes I should say as this is the wildcat fire smoke just ripping across the area. So very dramatic scenery there, there yesterday. And we take a look at eight meter uh, smoke. So this is very close to the surface and you can see air quality not good for many locations, especially Cascades East. I mean, look as we go through the day tomorrow uh, across portions of, you know, you're looking out towards Ellensburg and Moses Lake and Ritzville and down in towards Pendleton also and some areas of the Oregon Cascades. Not too bad for the Seattle Metro and Portland Metro. This stays mostly across the higher terrain there, but of course this is still a lot of people live across some of the higher elevations here in Washington in BC and Eastern Oregon dealing with a lot of surface smoke is probably not going to get better over the next few days. Some relief possible as we go through next week. If we look at the integrated, vertically integrated smoke, a lot of smoke aloft, and this is probably going to be wreaking havoc with some of the temperatures as well, not allowing it to get nearly as warm as it would otherwise across much of the region. You see, as we go through the day Friday, my goodness, look at all the smoke aloft across the area by the time we get towards Friday morning. Now, last 12 hours across Western Oregon, we got a few lightning strikes there as well, a few thunderstorms. And this is going to be a recurring theme here over the next few days. We have thunderstorm potential cascades west as we go through this upcoming weekend with this negatively tilted trough to, to move down towards southwest Oregon and northern California will be with us. So looking at 500 millibar heights, this is a general trough and ridge position. There's the trough out over the open water. There's the ridge here, but this is also allowing this monsoon moisture to come up across the region, which will keep the thunderstorms going for the next few days. Possible additional fire starts, not out of the question. We got red flag warnings across the region and some very warm conditions, especially across some of the higher terrain of the area as well. I'll show you more on that in a moment. And if you want a nice affordable home weather station to record all the crazy weather we get here in the Pacific Northwest, you are not going to be disappointed with this one. Click on the link down below to save 10% off and help support the channel. Now, heat advisory from places away from the Puget Sound and some of the Salish Sea there and red flag warnings also across some of the higher terrain. You go inland, you start to get towards the extreme heat warnings, for example, for places like Yakima, same thing for Oregon. There's the Dallas in the extreme heat warning. Red flag warnings for the Cascade continue to exist here with additional thunderstorm potential coming up across the area and even of the isolated dry thunderstorm potential as well. So additional fire starts are possible. There's Lewiston, Idaho, Walla Walla, Pasco, Moses Lake, Ellensburg, Yakima, Sunnyside. There's Hermiston and Pendleton all under extreme heat warnings right now. Places like Ritzville and Moses Lake are under heat advisories and we still have the red flag warnings for the higher terrain. Very warm across the Idaho Panhandle and for Libby, Montana as well under heat advisories. Now, of course, further south, lightning activity will be going on today. There's Crater Lake. Red flag warnings will be in place. Thunderstorm here on the SPC, the Storm Prediction Center. You can clearly see it here moving up towards the South Washington Cascades. And tomorrow and the day on Friday and through Saturday morning, we have the potential for some of those storms even moving west of the Cascades. And like I mentioned, isolated dry thunderstorms possible, which means these thunderstorms
thunderstorms are not producing enough precipitation to extinguish the fires that they start. So here we go with precipitable water. You can see this monsoon moisture kind of in place up across portions of Oregon. It continues to make its trek northbound as we go on in through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And that will be with us as we go on in towards the early portion of the weekend. Then the next trough starts to arrive and it keeps us in this negatively tilted portion of the trough, which means we have that flow out of the southwest out of the southeast towards the northwest and thunderstorm potential could be moving across the region again more fire starts could get some thunderstorm activity west of the cascades maybe seattle portland up into southwest bc here as well so seven day significant wildland fire potential and you, you can really see that we're dealing with elevated conditions across the majority of the Pacific Northwest, or I should say Washington, Oregon in this case, but of course this goes for British Columbia portions of Idaho as well. And the red with the lightning bolts there, that's lightning fire start critical burn areas or critical burn environment, I should say. And then you can see elevated is the brown. So hopefully we start to get some relief as we start to go through the end of the weekend towards next week. More on that here in a moment. So the K index, one more look at that instability. It's going to remain with us here across the Pacific Northwest as we go through this weekend. There goes the trial rolling in there and it starts to bring some of that instability back up across Washington and British Columbia. And that'll be with us through this weekend. And then hopefully this trough that rolls in here as we go through next week will pack a bit of a punch with it and start to cool us down and help us suppress temperatures and kind of reduce the fire threat across the area because we have quite a bit of fires, as you saw. And it's going to be hard to put those out. It's not like you're going to be able to swing one trough through here and just put an end to the fire season. Contrary to what local weather bloggers are saying about that, you're going to need multiple rounds of troughs to put out this fire activity here across the region. I mean, we had a big wicked atmospheric river and it didn't even extinguish a fire on the olympic peninsula which is still producing smoke as we speak so yeah we're going to need multiple troughs to help us out here as we go through the next few weeks to really put an end to this fire season one trough is not going to do the trick so as we go on into thursday morning here we go. You see some of this popping off across southwest Washington, maybe the Oregon coast. We go through the day on Thursday. Thunderstorm activity across the Cascades will go on in through Thursday night and into Friday. Another round of thunderstorms. There are potential fire starts. Don't like to see that. And then you see some of this precipitation moving out across the Puget Sound, maybe southwest Washington, northwest Oregon as we go through Friday night into Saturday. Yeah, some potential thunderstorms there west of the Cascades. And then we roll this next trough in here and hopefully bring a little bit more meaningful precipitation and cool the temperatures down a bit as we go on in through next week. So looking at that precipitation here, as we go through the next few days, this, this ain't it. This stuff is not going to be extinguishing fires, folks. This is just going to be causing more fires. This is not enough precipitation to put out any kind of fire as we go through the weekend. But as we go through the early portion of next week we start to see a little bit of a better signal start to approach there because we're definitely going to need it and it's going to take like i said multiple rounds of troughing here to put an end to our fire season across the region so if we take a, a look here at the european artificial intelligence ensemble mean on the left versus the gfs ensemble mean on the right and i'll put this into motion and again if we go through this weekend this ain't going to do it, folks. We're going to need more precipitation than that across the area. But we start to see a little bit of that signal as we go through next week and maybe through the mid portion of September. Who knows? A lot can change, as you know, when you start looking up over 200 hours out off into the forecast. But at least it's something. And again, we're going to need it if we want to put an end to this wildfire season as we go through the month of September. Now, looking at daily two meter max temperature. There's Seattle, 83, pretty warm conditions, especially east of the mountains there and across the higher terrain, very warm temperatures as well. And we go through Thursday, Friday, probably the last of the very warm days west of the Cascades. And then we start to cool things down with this next trough rolling in here and we really need it. Hopefully this does come to, into fruition and we drop these temperatures back down. Look at that. As we go through next week, maybe back down into the mid seventies, east of the mountains, some 60s showing up there for Eastern Oregon as well. That would definitely be nice. But here we look at the GFS, two meter temperature anomaly. This just kind of gives you a good idea of just how warm we are across the region relative to normal. And the, the ecosystem feels this. We've been very dry and above normal here across Pacific Northwest. And we continue to do so. This is this taxes the system and it makes it easy for these fires to spread. Now we go on in through Thursday peak heating. Again, very warm conditions. Some areas 20, 25, 30 degrees above normal. We go through Friday. There's hour 21. This is starting to get into the late afternoon. And again, a very warm 
warm setup here as we go through Friday. Then hopefully we start to get some relief, but still another very warm day across, especially the interior portions of British Columbia, Northeast Washington, Idaho Panel, and Northwest Montana. And if you go through this weekend, finally some relief starts to show up here. Maybe we can kick this heat out of there. My goodness, as we go on into the early portion of next week, six to 10 day mixed bag. Take with that what you will. That goes through September 12th. That's not much help. And this is nice to see. I'm not quite sold on it just yet, but hopefully this will be the case. This will be September 8th through 12th. Maybe we'll start to bring some above normal precipitation in here and help to suppress some of this fire activity. And if you want to donate to the channel, the Patreon page is a great way to do it. Click on the link down below if you want to check out the page and it lets you donate about 90 percent of whatever money you're putting into the patreon page goes to the creator so glad to see that um anyway yep i'll wrap this video up here i might go out there and try to capture some more fire stuff here today maybe i'll go out for this evening and try to capture some of the flames coming over the ridge top on the wildcat fire here as well so anyway hope you guys are having a good day click like and subscribe we will do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then